time. Uh, give us your own key takeaway from the earnings, and more importantly, uh, how is uh, the market shaping up uh, sure. for you? Yeah, I mean, we've been on a journey at Light and Wonder really driving an end-to-end -end transformation program over the last three to four years. And so the growth that we're seeing is off the back of that um, really recalibrated strategy and reinvestment into the business. And that's really centered around creating great content for the gaming industry and investing in the right platforms and technologies to distribute those games across all of the channels that we compete in. So land-based gaming, digital gaming, and social gaming. And so retooling our strategy a few years ago, returning to a really healthy balance sheet, freeing up cash to reinvest in the business is really driving the results that you're seeing now in the market. And we're really excited and we see a lot of growth ahead. Um, as you noted, the Asian market and the international markets um, was a big growth driver in this cycle of our earnings. And I've been in the Asian region for the last few days and it's just really exciting to see the level of growth that we're seeing from um, really a multiple of markets here in the region. So when you look at your stock, uh, gaining about 6% in the last three months, and I think more so from a year-to-date perspective, do you think for casino operators, for gaming stocks, uh, things have changed? Yes, I think so. I mean, there's there's a lot of growth in the industry. I mean, certainly the pandemic hit us hard, but gaming is a very resilient industry. And if you look over the last 20 years, there's steady growth mm -hmm. and expansion continues. So there remains a lot of organic growth within the, the industry. The pandemic highs have come off, right? The pandemic highs have come off primarily. Um, Macau is still in recovery mode. They opened up roughly 18 months ago. Um, so they're roughly about 80 to 90 percent of gross gaming revenues post-pandemic, um, but there's still a lot of expansion going on in North America and primarily the Asian region, which just drives a lot of organic growth. Yeah, and you had some success, like, uh, uh, some remarkable growth when it comes to Australia as well in the, the first quarter, but, but I wanted to ask you, because it's, forgive me for being a, a little bit naive when it comes to, you know, poker machines or slot machines, whatever you yeah. want to call them, do you, do you differentiate your offerings based on the region? Because you, you, I saw this survey where you guys had, you know, some of the, the, the most favoured um, different um, programs that people can be playing with, but is there, a, in different regions, like for example, for the Asian market, for the US market, for the Australian market, do you have like different games that you develop just for them? Yes, I would say primarily a lot of the content transfers across the globe, but you do have to take local considerations and consumer preferences into account. So we do tweak game content depending on the jurisdiction that we're delivering it to. I think Macau is a great example. You know, that's a very discerning, mature, gambler consumer. You know, they want to get in and, and play the games that they love. Um, so we have to make sure that our game content is specified for that local market. And you mentioned Asia as well because, you know, it, it almost seems to be that for the, the past couple of years at least you've seen like, you know, new casinos opening up in Vietnam, Cambodia, everywhere around the region. Are, are they your primary target areas or does this nothing, you know, compete with, you know, the, the revenue you're going to drive out of the United States? I think Asia is becoming a real contender. I mean, Macau is the second largest gaming market in the world. Um, the Philippines right now is generating, we estimate, five to six billion dollars in gross gaming revenues, and some are forecasting that to double in the next few years. I mean, right now that's comparable to the Singapore market. So there's just huge amounts of growth coming out of Asia right now.